Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am doing my April wrap up and I waited a few days to make this video because I'm trying to figure out how to make a video and talk about the number of books I read without the video being too long. So we're going to try something a little bit different. So I'm at this angle so that I'm facing my laptop, which is right behind my phone. Um, and so what I did is I sorted the books in my wrap up according to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? According to genre. And hopefully if I do this efficiently enough, the video won't be too long. And that's what I was trying to avoid. So before I tell you about the books I read, how about I tell you my stats for April? So let's talk about the stats. Now I will probably shut the video off and turn it back on and just edit everything together, but hopefully I'll do it smooth enough so you won't really see when I do that. So for April, I was able to read 54 books and I'm really proud of myself um, because I, I'm just bringing up one of the books that I read. Take my hand, come on up, okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to get, I have my laptop behind me, my iPad below me, but I'm also getting my tablet because there's something that I want to say that I can do without changing any of the screens I already have in front of me. So I'll give you the rundown for the year. That's why I'm bringing up this other tablet. Last year I read 584 books, so when I went into January, I went into January with the goal of reading 600 books for 2022. And I got off to a great start in January, and if I go back on my spreadsheet, and when I say spreadsheet, I mean a very, very detailed spreadsheet, I was able to read uh, 51 books in January. But I went into the hospital, I think, on January 28th. So 28, 29, 30, 31. So I didn't read the last four days of January, but I still managed to get 51 books read. So I was off to a great start for my goal of 600 books. But that hospitalization in at the end of January was pretty intense, uh, psychologically wise. <coughs> Well, I also had the flu and COVID, so I was majorly depressed, flu and COVID. So when I went into February, I dropped down to 22 books. In fact, since I've been using Goodreads to track my books and also the spreadsheets that I create every month, every year, 22 is the least amount of books I have read in the last several years. But March, I picked things up and I did pretty good. I, I went from 22 in February to 37 in March. So as of the end of March, I was up to 110 books. Then we go into April, which is what this video is about. And I was able to read 54 books. My goal was 55. So I'm quite happy with those 54. So that brought me to 164 books in April. Now I've already read 10 books this month of May, so I'm technically at 174 books, but we're just going to go as far as April is concerned. So since I was able to read 54 books in April, I read 17,796 pages. And I am going to get this tablet again and give you a different statistic. So I read 1,770 no, 17,796 pages in April. And by do, doing that, that broke down to 329 pages per book, per book rather. And it also broke down to 593 pages per day. Now, just for the sake of understanding, in February, I read 258 pages per day on average. And April, I read 593 pages per day on average. So I definitely got my reading mojo back. 
but because of the experience that I had at the end of January, I did lower my goal from 600 to 400. As mentioned, I read 10 books so far this month of May, and even though today's only May 5th and I haven't quite read today yet, I am at 174, so I might raise that goal, but I'm going to wait till at least the third quarter of 2022 before I raise that goal. So, and now this video is mostly going to be numbers, guys, okay, it's because every week I do a recent reads video and you can even look in my playlist and you'll see in the recent reads uh, what I read every week and I do I do individual book reviews daily and I do weekly recent reads reviews which are mini reviews for those book reviews I did so we're not going to be completely redundant and do it again for uh, 54 books because if I did that this video would be an hour or more longer so, so I'm editing in this part. I'm going to put it after I talk about the 600, I mean the 593 pages per book to tell you the breakdown of all the books that I'm going to talk about in the video. There were eight audio books and 38 net galley arcs and as you'll see in the course of this video, four print arcs. I was pretty busy in April because I did 31 blog posts. 24 of those were blog tours and on NetGalley I did 20 reviews but the difference between the 31, 24, and 20 is because I have to cross post and I haven't quite done that yet. I also for this channel made 68 YouTube videos. 54 of those were book related or book reviews and the remainder had to do with cross stitching or diamond painting. So um, I also want to mention at this point in the video my January favorite was A Dust Bowl Orphans by Suzette D. Harrison. My February favorite was A Life for a Life by Carol Weyer. My March favorite was Love People Use Things by Joshua Fields Milborn and Ryan Nicodemus. And that was an audiobook arc. My April favorite was Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins, uh, Perkins Valdez. So I just wanted to give you that information and I'm just going to try to, yeah, I just want to give you that information and I'm going to go just pull all this in together. But what you're going to see is a long video. The other thing I am going to do is I am going to timestamp this video by genre so that you can jump ahead to the parts of the video that might be of interest to you and ignore the parts that don't interest you. So what I decided to do was to categorize my books on the spreadsheet, which I have, like I said, it's behind me on my laptop. Um, and the first book that we're going to talk about, according to how I categorize this in alphabetical order, was Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. Now, this was the an own voices book, and it was a book that was inspired by true events from 1973 Montgomery, Alabama. And our character here, Civil Townsend, wanted to help women make their choices for their lives and their bodies based on a tragic experience that she had. So that was my own voices book for April. Now, I then, just in alphabetical, read some cozy mysteries and it looks like I read seven cozy mysteries in April and the first one was a plot most perilous by Genevieve Essig and then I read murder at the gardens by Lisa Cotts or Cuts I'm sorry I thought I increased the font so I don't have to strain my eyes then I read a couple of books by Vicki Delaney and they were deadly summer nights in deadly director's cut for these two books and the next two books I mentioned, I did a mini uh, cozy mystery review. I reviewed, reviewed four books in one video. And then I read On Skein of Death and Knit or Die Trying, and those were by Allie Pyder, or Pyder, and those, like I said, were in that group review of the cozy mysteries that I did that particular day or week. The last cozy mystery I read for uh, April was A Body on the Beach 
by D. McDonald. Now, D. McDonald is kind of my hero because she didn't start writing until she was 70 years old. I love that example because I keep thinking that one day I want to write a book, but I'm currently 61 years old, but hope is not lost. Yes, I will be sipping on coffee just so that I don't lose my voice. Then I will move into historical fiction and according to this alphabetical order of the genres, I read four historical fiction books. They were The Pilot's Girl by Katherine Hogan. There was this woman who was a photographer. Her name was Honey Winter. In fact, the, the Pilot's Girl is the second book in her series and I did read the first book last year and the first book in this, okay, why is my tablet not moving, was The Commandant's Daughter. And in The Commandant's Daughter, Honey Winter struggled to find where her father was because he was a Nazi war criminal and she wanted to bring him to justice. Well, in the second book, Honey, I'm just going to pick up my iPad because I'm trying to read this. In the second book, Honey uh, was continuing on as a photographer and um, I was thinking of the women's auxiliary, but that's going to be another book. But this was how it crossed genre because genres because she was a photographer, had already dealt with the with the situation with her father in the previous book. But in this book, she ended up working alongside a detective named Freddie, and they were working on solving murders. So that's why I say this book crossed genres because it was a mystery, but it was also a historical fiction, mainly a historical fiction. The next historical fiction I read was Garden of Secrets, and this was by Annalie Huber. Now, with Garden of Secrets, I didn't get this book in time before it, um, why can't I find it, Anna? Am I saying the right one? Oh, I'm sorry, this is Suzanne Kelman. That's why I can't find it, because the, uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, for Suzanne Kalman's book, I didn't get it in time before it, the arc expired on NetGalley, so I went to Audible and got it instead. I am so glad I did because it was a fabulous audiobook. And in Garden of Secrets, we have Anya, who uh, her mother had died and her stepfather was demanded that she marry in order to save the family from financial ruin. So she flees and she this is where I talked to, I was going to talk about the women's auxiliary force about women taking bigger roles in World War II. So she Anna fled from her stepfather from being forced to marry somebody and she played a big role in World War II. But this book was a dual timeline book because it took place during World War II, but then there was, in present day, somebody named Laura found a photograph and she investigated the source of that photograph. And both in World War II and in present day, A Secret Garden, which is the name of the book, was the catalyst as far as that was concerned. Then the book by Annalie Huber that I read, which, and I did make notes and I haven't followed these and uh, I put L so that looks like I have five books to send to pub book reviews to send to publishers. So I'll do that after this video. So then I read A Perilous Perspective by Annalie Huber and I did enjoy this book. As a matter of fact, almost all of the books that I read um, got five stars. Uh, four or five stars um, this uh, month of April because I curate the books that I read. I, I choose what I want to read and I'm usually pretty happy. Now, for some reason, I don't have this review on Net Gallery or Goodreads, but I have reviewed it, so I guess I have to make that adjustment today. This book here was about, uh, it was the 10th book in the Lady Darby mystery series. Now, I have since grabbed the list of the first nine books and put them in a spreadsheet because I do want to go back and reread them. I mean, to read them so that when book 11 comes out, I will have read the whole series. So that's a goal that I have for the next few months. Well, this was about Lady Cara Darby and her husband, Sebastian Gage. Now, 
I did look at some of the summaries for some of the previous books and she had been married to somebody else, was widowed, and now she's married to Sebastian Gage. And it was a great, it was, I, it's historical fiction, but I think it's also a bit of cozy mystery in there. So I really like that one. Then I read Shadow in the Mind's Eye by Jane, Janery. Okay, let me spell her name. It's J-A-N-Y-R-E. So Jane Eyre, maybe? And I loved it. Her name is Jane Eyre Trump. And it was a debut. And I'm just bringing it up because I do have to refresh myself because I read so many books. But this one was really good. And it looks like it's another one that I didn't get published um, on social media. But I will definitely fix that because this one's been reviewed. Now, Shadow, Shadow in the Mind's Eye is about Shallon and Matis and how her husband Sam went to war. And when he came back from war, they... At before war, she got pregnant, so they now have a toddler or a preschooler. And Sam comes back from war completely changed. And um, I remember writing this review because it was battle-specific war injury or something that it was called, but what we call it now is PTSD. And But it wasn't just about the drama between Charlotte and Sam and how Sam was affected by the war. There was also a mystery and mob activity. So this was another good cross-genre book. So that ends, <coughs> excuse me, that ends my historical fiction books for April. Then I read two, um, two memoirs. I'm getting one of them. The first one was Unmasked which is My Life Solving America's Cold Cases by Paul Holes. Now, at, at least one, maybe even two of the groups I'm in, this is a group read, but I've already read it, so I won't be participating in those unless I choose to reread it, but I probably won't. But I didn't know who Paul Holes was. I had no idea when I got this art. It's a print art, but if you get this book from the store, you'll get it as a hardcover book. But I got it as a trade paperback just so that they could give it to me ahead of time. So anyway, this book came out in April. And um, my husband asked me the other day, isn't there a new America's Most Wanted? So I found out that it's on Hulu, and he is one of the commentators in that show. So Tony worked last night, so when he gets up, him and I are going to watch America's Most Wanted 2021 or 2022, I'm not sure. And I'll get to see Paul Holes in action. And if you want to see this gorgeous fella, there he is. He's so gorgeous. So anyway... That he was instrumental in catching, getting the Golden, State, the Golden State Killer caught. The Golden State Killer killed across 40, I think 40 years. And he went through all the cold cases he could to try to find that killer. So that was a really good memoir. The other memoir I read was My Seven Black Fathers by Will Jawando. And I love this book because he was half Nigerian, half Caucasian, and his father left them, and it was just his mother single, raising him as a single mother. Well, he wanted to turn the trajectory of black males, poor black males. The statistics for poor black males is not good, and he wanted to be on the positive side of those statistics. So he wrote of seven black men who influenced his life in order to make him the man he is today. And the man that uh, Will Juwando is today is an activist and a politician. Now, some of those men were jo Joseph Jacobs, his stepfather, Mr. Williams, his third or fourth grade teacher, uh, President Obama, uh, uh, another Nigerian man who went to Nigeria with him around the time his grandmother died, um, his own father, and it showed how he uh, overcame huge hurdles to be successful. A great, great memoir. And I'm kind of liking doing it th this way. But this is going to be long because for mystery thrillers, I read 22. Okay? So, let's try to do this efficiently. Fortunately, they look like they're fairly well in alphabetical order by author. Well, not by author, but grouped if they're grouped together. So, the first mystery thriller I read was Renegade by Nancy Allen. 
Now, yes, I have to look it up. Sometimes when I will look a book up, I just have to glance at it and then it comes back. But, okay, so this was The Anonymous Justice, number one. So it's going to be the first book in a new series. Again, I, I see, I spent last week, well, I spent the last several weeks in bed. But last week in particular, all these reviews got written, but they didn't get transferred over to Goodreads and NetGalley. So I'm going to do that right after this video. So this is the first book in a new series. And when I get books for review, if they are the first book in a new series, I almost always take them because I am a diehard series fanatic. So here we have Assistant DA Kate Stone and um, how she had to get... Now I remember the books. So I just had to bring it up. I bring it up here. She had to go to anger management because she lost a huge case. And when she lost that case, she also lost her job. So she goes to anger management. She she I don't believe she spoke out in that first meeting. She just listened. She the torch went to her and she chose she chose not to speak. So afterwards, somebody came to her and said, you know, this place is kind of silly. I have a better place that you can go. And now, when you look at the cover, you see a bunch of people on the screen in silhouette. Well, these people were, uh, what's that word? Uh, I can't think of it, but when people uh, bring take the law into their own hands, and that's how the title Renegade comes into play. So that is the first book in the new series. And as far as I know, the second book has not yet been uh, announced. So that's Renegade and how they took the law into their own hands. I, I'm drawing a blank on, on what that is. I have another book that I didn't mention earlier when I talked about the print arcs and I'm going to have to edit this into this existing video. Somehow I forgot. It, it's called Pesticide by Kim Hayes. This is a cabbage with pesticide on it, right? something funny I can tell you when I did a collage of all the books that I read in April Facebook rejected my post they said it was nudity and sexual harassment because I guess this pesticide looks like something else so oh this picture of pesticide looks like something else I think that's funny well anyway this book is a the first book in a new series the Linda and Donatelli murder mystery series and I love this book because first of all it's it's Nordic Noir which is like dark uh, Scandinavian mystery and it's about a team of detectives and in this particular book they find out they're trying to solve a murder and they have to get to the root cause of the murder and as the title shows pesticide was the root cause but it took them a while to get there as a matter of fact they thought it might have been drugs or something else that was behind it and I had this you know as a print arc I don't have it in any other format but if you are interested in this book you can get this book. It will be a hardcover um, because I have it as a print arc. It came out on April 19th. So, like I said, I'm going to edit this in because I left it out. Thanks. The next book I read for a review, oh, The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. My goodness. Um, this is maybe the second or third book that I read like this. And uh, when I said I read like this, um, what? What the heck did I bring up? I'm stumbling over the words. This is the second or third book that I have read that reminds me of Rear Window by James, but uh, with James, Jimmy Stewart. That's what I wanted to say. Um, I have read at least two, maybe even three books that do this where it's kind of like a closed situation where you only, where you have a murder, but you have a very limited amount of suspects because of the of being closed so where it reminds me of the pair of real window is we have a voyeur in this book and the voyeur is jess and all kinds of things happen because somebody like i said had been killed 
But in this parish apartment, there were only maybe six or seven possible people who could have been the murderer. And um, I think I might even go through my previous books to find the other lock book, lock room type of books that I read and just do a whole separate video on that because I love that. I love it like, like, and then there were none by Kath, by uh, Agatha Christie where uh, there were 10 suspects and then there were nine and then there were eight. And so anytime you have that, you know, I, I just love books like that. And that's what the Paris apartment was. Then I had Steel by James Patterson. And Steel I had as an audiobook review, but it was a third book in a series. So I went back and got to my library or, library or Audible and got Instinct and Killer Instinct and read all three, binge read all three, one after the other. And um, this was, I do have to go and get this. Uh, to refresh me this what excuse me this was about um, this one here was about an art theft and it was a very 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 elaborate scheme in order for this to happen so <clears throat> um, our character Dylan is the person that is I, I don't know if I want to say dead or missing. That's why I paused. I'm not sure if I want to say dead or missing. And a search for him, it, it gets uh, underway. And so with this being the third book in the series, our detective is Elizabeth Needham. And we see the different things that she does in the course of these three books. So that's very, very, very uh, vague. And forgive me for being vague, but I'm trying to do this quickly. So I will throw those three book covers up all at once. Then I read Crimson Summer, which I stuck in mystery thrillers, but I'm trying to make sure that it is. It might be in the wrong genre here. It might be women's fiction, but I'm, I'm going to fix that. Yeah, nope, I was right. I threw it in, not threw it in, but I did place it in the right genre. This is the Amy Larson and Hunter Forrest uh, FBI FBI book number two. The first one was um, Danger in Numbers, which I read about a year ago. These bo her her books come out usually yearly, and this was a good. They are uh, FDLE, which Florida, Florida, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. So it's kind of like the FBI, but on the state level. Okay, the FDLE. And so we have two special agents, Amy Larson, as mentioned, and Hunter Forrest, and they are investigating a water, a water, a war in a murder that, and I say war because it's like a turf war with a uh, uh, mob, like uh, gangs, a gang, tur a gang turf war. I, I'm just stumbling over my words. I know exactly what it's about. I'm just stumbling. And then um, now... Crimson Summer and Fool Me, uh, Crimson Summer and this one that I'm about to look up now, Fool Me Once, were part of, uh, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Were part of Harlequin's mystery, uh, blog tour program. And so when I do Harlequin's books, I get mystery, I get romance, I get inspirational and I get women's fiction. So Fool Me Once in Crimson Summer, and I'm bringing up the cover to for Fool Me Once, which was by Ashley Winstead. Um, this fell right into that. And this one here is about um, a communications director in, uh, what did I say? Oh. I love this one. We have Lee Stone and Bill Laterman, and they were allies who used to be a couple years before, and they're both fighting for an energy bill. They're trying to replace the county's electric, I mean, gas operated cars and machinery with electric cars and machinery. But in order to bring those electric cars in, they have to clap, uh, get a clean energy bill. Past. And 
Lee and Ben are allies, but they have old feelings because they were together once before. But this whole time, they both they both had their own platform to get this energy bill passed. I kind of like that. It was a good. It was kind of romantic suspense, kind of mystery thriller. A really good book. I really liked it. Then I have an impossible imposter by. Um, I had it and it just left the screen. Impossible by uh, Deanna Rayburn, and that is the seventh book in the Veronica Speedwell series. And if I'm if I do a good job of editing, I will bring up all seven books in one screenshot. I love Veronica Speedwell, and I also love the time frame. It's London, eighteen eighty nine. Okay, now she is a an amateur sleuth so this could actually go into the cozy mystery genre but I'm gonna leave it in the mystery thrillers and now um, her and her beau Stoker are trying to find out what happened to a man who uh, Stoker was asked to keep an eye on a man because he was supposed to be a witness in a, 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 an upcoming court case. So the man was coming in on train, on the train, but when he, when the train arrived, he was in his seat and he was dead. So now, instead of just watching for the man so that he was able to testify, now Veronica and Stoker are investigating his murder. Excellent book, excellent series. Then I had M.M. Shuanad's Her Silent Prayer, and I love that one. Um, that was a great read because it's part of a series that I have really been enjoying, and it's the Detective Joe Furnier, fifth book in that series. And like I said, I think I'm going to get really creative with my editing and bring you entire series and single sp screenshots. So in this particular book, our uh, Detective Joe is on the case when she finds a single mother that had been murdered. And when she finds out about the murder of the single mother, she finds other cases that match the same MO. Then I moved on to Widow Falls by Kirsten Modglin. And I am in the process of trying to read as many Kirsten Modglin's books as I can. So this was a book that had been on my TBR forever in a day. And I went ahead and um, got this one read. And I've even got another one. But the next one that I have is an audiobook one. So she writes really good mystery thrillers, but in this case, it's about people who went missing at this place called Widow Falls. And then we have Sloan, who took a job as a guide for a riverboat cruise or tour. And the mystery is, when Sloan took the job, she wasn't sure why she had to replace somebody. Well, the person she replaced end up being the reason that Sloan went from being a guide to kind of like an investigator and trying to figure out what happened there. The next one I read was The Breakdown by Ariane Richmond. Look at this cover. I love the cover. I like the uh, the way, if, just, if you can kind of see that cover clearly, I'll make sure it's big enough for you to see it. Well, we had a woman who had a perfect life that was not perfect anymore. And in her case, it was a woman who gave birth to a child by cesarean after a car accident. But the thing is, she lost her memory. And in this book, we have her trying to regain her memory. But then while she does that, her children start disappearing. And so did she break down from loss of memory in the accident? Did somebody take her children? What ha oh, really, really good book by Ariane Richmond. I loved it. Then I read Silent Little Angels by Jennifer Chase. And so Silent Little Angels is a book that is the Detective Skady, Katie Scott book number seven. Now, I think I read all but the first one. I read two through seven. And here, Detective Katie Scott is a cold case investigator. And in this case, she finds a, uh, the body of a little girl and now... Um, she's investigating that murder. And remember, 
she's a cold case investigator and so i i like that and another thing about uh our investigator katie is uncle is the sheriff so what she does is she sometimes works with her uncle but there are also times she works against her uncle because they knock heads so we're just going to segue into the younger wife by sally hepworth now the younger wife and it's not even coming up here but it was I can tell you what this one was about. It was about a man who tells his adult children, hey, I'm about to get married. This woman here, he invites them to lunch. We're going to get married. Well, the problem is the wife was younger than his two daughters. But that, the new wife, but that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was uh, he was already married to their mother. But their mother had, was, had advanced dementia and was in a home so he was simply going to divorce his wife unknowingly for the wife and marry this younger woman that was what the younger wife was then i read pieces of her by karen slaughter i reread it because i have girl forgotten by her which i think comes out in june so i'm going to be reading girl forgotten pieces of her is the first book in a series that's also a i believe it's either netflix or hulu i wasn't into the series at all i only watched two of seven or eight episodes but i wanted to read that book to re-familiarize myself with the protagonist and so i will be reading girl forgotten and um i did not Re, uh, review pieces of her on this channel because I it's a reread and I had read it last year. Then I read the woman's excuse me the widow's husband, and it looks like I have to type these in because uh, I'm just not doing what I thought I could do. So the widow's husband, I um, Leslie Sanderson was a woman who was almost at the point where she could uh, declare her husband dead. The widow's husband, I'm sorry, let me jump back, was basically about a woman whose husband had been missing for just about seven years and she kind of wanted to, was into somebody, but she couldn't marry because she still was legally married to uh, her husband that had been lost. But before her husband went missing, they actually had split up and even divorced because he started living with another woman. So that was, there was a mystery because maybe a month or two months before she would, able, would be able to declare him legally dead, she gets a note in her mail slot. I miss you. I want to come home. And then she gets another note. And, it, and her his handwriting is very distinctive. So where is he still alive? Where, where has he been the past seven years? So that was the widow's husband. Then I had death. Then I had death of the black widow. And I am so mad right now. I'm going to have to fix up my. Uh, my. Uh, oh, OK. James Patterson. Oh, wow. OK. I'm going to name three authors, James Patterson, Dean Koontz, and Riley Sager. You don't always know if you're going to be reading a mystery or a paranormal or a supernatural. You don't always know with those authors. So when I was going to read Death of the Black Widow, which was by James Patterson and J.D. Barker, I had no idea that we were going to be reading something paranormal slash supernatural so we have a woman who killed men now a black widow spider kills its mate after mating well this woman was called the black widow but was she a widow i mean excuse me was she a woman or was she a monster i'll have to read it to find out now when i had mentioned crimson summoned fool me once for the harlequin mystery ones i just got a great idea on how I can do what I couldn't do before. Since my laptop, I mean my iPad is acting funny, we're going to uh, use the laptop. So I read The Wrong Victim by Allison Brennan and I am trying to see if I 
I just have an idea. Yes. Okay. We can totally, we're just totally going to use the laptop. So you're going to see me looking up because the laptop is kind of behind this, this thingy. So in The Wrong Victim, it's the detective Quinn and Costa third book in the series. I read the first two and I'm going to tell you what they were. They were really good. All three of them. It was, uh, the third to die and tell me no lies. I think I'm sorry. My laptop is jumping. Yeah. The third to die and tell no lies. Now, in The Wrong Victim, we have Quinn and Costa again, and they are a mobile FBI team. And what makes this team distinctive is, first of all, it's a newly formed team. Secondly, it's a mobile team, so they go here, they go there. Thirdly, there are profilers, there are investigators, there are special agents. And then fourthly, our female protagonists... Um, um, I want to tell you who's, uh, her name is, her, she's Quinn, but I'm trying to tell you her first name. But anyway, she is an L.A. cop, but she, in a previous case, she blew her cover, so she's no longer safe. So she, on that job, so she is on loan to the FBI. That's all I wanted to say on that one. Then I read, uh, The Girl in the Ground in the Trap Ones by Stacy Green. Now, I had the trap ones for a blog tour, so which I don't think I put it up yet. I think it's going up tomorrow. And so therefore, I went back and I read uh, the trap ones. And these were books four and five in whose series? Uh, well, I'll tell you one minute. And they were really good. Um, it won't take long. Bear with me. Oh, I guess it will take one. Stacy S T A. There we go. Okay, Nikki Hunt. Now, Nikki Hunt is an FBI agent. Sometimes I just have to see one thing to bring it to mind. It's books four and five. I read one, two, three, and then I read um, the girl in the ground and the trap ones. And this is basically uh, she's just she's an FBI agent, and she will go to wherever the crimes are. Now, the drama in the girl in the ground is her current boyfriend, Rory, was a suspect in one of the murders she's investigating. In the trap ones, she's investigating a new murder, but there's still some drama in her personal life. And in the drama in her personal life are her ex-in-laws are trying to get custody of her six or seven year old daughter. So this is, it has some drama and it has the mystery. So the last book I read for review in this genre and I am going to be time stamping these videos this video and that way uh, and I'll, I'll go and I'll mention that in the beginning as well but I will time stamp them so you can just look at the genre that interests you so the family I lost could I put it as mystery thriller but I kind of think this should be a women's fiction um, yeah, it's yet another one that's not on Goodreads for me. But, um, okay. Yeah, okay. We're going to keep it as a mystery thriller. So The Family I Lost is basically a woman is at a function. And she meets a guy and he goes, you know, you have the look of my wife. There's a certain resemblance. And so she start, he starts asking her questions. Lo and behold, she is related to his wife. She's his wife's cousin, first cousin. The woman never met before and now they meet. Well, the husband goes off. He's like a, a an archaeologist or something. So he goes off to New Zealand to do some research. And the woman that uh, is the cousin to the lady he met had just had a baby and she is struggling. So she says to her newly met cousin, why don't you come stay with me? Cause she also had a toddler or a preschooler and she's got the new baby. So she asked her newly met cousin to come stay with her. Well, there's some mystery there. There's some drama there as to why they never met. So it's a t toss up between women's fiction and mystery thriller, but we'll leave it right where it is for now. Then I had Walking Gentry Home, my only poetry book for this month and for this year. And this is uh, by Alora Young. 
And in um, Walking Gentry Home, Laurie Young uses verse to recount her history. And for those uh, matriarchs in her family and how they influenced her positively. Really good book. It won't be out for a few months yet. Then we move on to romance. And I am reaching for a book because this was one that I read as moving that out the way as a print arc and this is out of the blue by Allison Bliss and this we have Presley Owens um, who needed to get in shape because she was pre-diabetic her doctor said your a1c numbers are getting up there and you know by the time she got her next blood test or blood work done she would most likely be diabetic so she goes to a gym in order to try to get healthy to keep her A1C numbers down. Well, she meets this guy at the gym and his name is Josh and they hit it off. She's overweight and worried about her health and he is the perfect specimen of a man and it's a love story. Excellent, excellent book. The next book in Romance I read was If You Ask Me by Libby uh, Hubscher and this was a good one. I loved it. Um, I think, is this one that I, I'm not sure, because I, I, I was thinking of giving this one four star, three stars, but I went ahead and did four. But this one is about an advice columnist who, her life falls apart to the point where she was using her advice column as if it was a therapy uh, so, uh, outlet. So somebody would, you know, ask her, dear sweetie, I am upset with my husband about such and such. So when she would elicit advice, she would do it. When she would give advice, rather, she would do it based on her personal experiences. Meanwhile, her long-term relationship fizzled because she found her guy cheating. In fact, he was in bed with the woman he was cheating with. So she decides to burn all of his stuff like in a bonfire well the fire came out of control and the fire department gets called and that's where she meets the new guy and uh what's his name i want to tell you his name because i love i this is one I, I think i did i did enjoy this one i did give it more stars than i thought but she meets this guy named um des oh my goodness he was a fireman and he was everything to everyone Hi, I am back at my camera making another video because I keep leaving books out. So I'm going to insert this one. <coughs> this is the Cafe at Marigold Marina by Tilly Tennant. It's about a woman named Rosie who inherits a cafe at Marigold Marina just before her husband died or just after her husband died. So she puts it all into the cafe, but she doesn't know what her future will bring. But she has a chance to open up her heart a second time when she meets the guy, a guy named Kit, who owns a bookshop right near her marina. He comes in every day. I mean, not right near her marina, right near her. Right, he come right next to her cafe. He comes in every day. He always wants the same thing, and they hit it off. It's a sweet story. I got it um, a while ago, and it came out on April eighth. But I want to include it in this video. And then I read Summer at the Cape by Rayanne Thane. Oh, this review is getting long and I still have 20 something. No, 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 I don't. No, I'm getting there. Okay, I can keep going. All right, Summer at the Cape by Rayanne Thane was my next one. I for, for a second there, I thought I had 20 more, but I, I, I think I, I think I'm going to keep this video an hour and I'm going to do it. So Summer at the Cape was really good. It was a women's, I have it as a romance, but I guess it's a romance women's fiction. It's a, probably a good combination of both. And um, it starts off because uh, this woman asked her daughters to come help her because one of her daughters was starting a, a glam camp, a glamper. I don't know what you call it, but a glamorous camp. And her daughter was setting it up, but she ended up drowning. And but she wants to keep this project of her daughter's of her daughter going, the project her daughter started. So she asked uh, the, one of the daughters was in the identical twin to the girl that died, and the other one was the older daughter. And 
um, when their parents, when the girls were younger, the three girls were younger, the parents split up. The twins stayed with the mother and the older daughter went and stayed with the father, lived, you know, forever and a day. And so the girls had been separated for, for years. And so now they're trying to get to know each other again and deal with the grief of losing their sister. Really, really excellent, excellent book. Then I read Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and my goodness, did I love that book. I I really like Abby Jimenez. I can't tell you offhand how many books I've read by her, but I have read a few, and this was a good one. I gave it, looks like I gave it four or five stars. Oh, I gave it five stars. Now, I had Part of Your World as an audiobook arc, and our narrators were Julia Whelan and Zachary Weber. That alone made the book great. I've got to fix Goodreads because I said I read it twice, but I only read it once. Now, when I read this book, basically we have barriers that are there for Alexis Montgomery and Daniel Grant. They had a one night stand, but she just runs away. Now, what's, I'll give you one barrier. He was about 10 years her junior. That's, we'll stop there, but excellent, excellent five star book. Then I got asked by a publicist to do a beta read for Marcus by Lori Foster. I think the book will be out in a month or so. And uh, Marcus is a novella that Lori Foster, our author, is using any proceeds from this book to uh, go to a doggy shelter. So I will be buying this book so I can offer support. And I, th I think I. I think I made the video, but I won't post a video to a release, but I think I might put the charity in my description for that video. So I, I'm going to do that. Then I had In Bloom by, again, Lori Foster, but the, also Fern Michaels and Carolyn Brown. This was a trilogy that focused around Mother's Day, which is coming up. Great trilogy. Um, I don't think that book, either that book is not out yet or will be out in a couple of days. Then I had The No Show by Beth O'Leary. And remember I said that I was debating a rating. If I'm not mistaken, this is the book where the rating was a little iffy for me. And I think so, yeah. Because I ended up doing four stars, but I, I was really thinking four, a uh, three. Now, we have three women who had dates on Valentine's Day. And guess what? Their date was a no-show. So these women become friends, an unlikely trio of friends. That's pretty much what the book is about. And there's some romance in there. Then we have Business Not As Usual by Sharon C. Cooper. And this was a really good book because it was uh, a good multicultural romance. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, it might even be a biracial uh, romance. I just, I'm not sure. Nope, nope, not, no. Nope. Both of the, the protagonists were black, but I thought one of them was not. But anyway, I like this one. Didn't get this review up yet. I See, when I get sick, I keep reading and reading and reading, but I don't always get my content where it should be. This book was great because she was a speak it into existence person. I am beautiful. I am confident. I am lovable. I am a lottery winner. Guess what? She did win the lottery. She spoke it into existence. Loved it. The last romance I read for that month was The Dash and Wears Prada by Stephanie London. This was said to be a rom-com. That's a romantic comedy. And it was really good in... Um, the romantic part was the Dasher named Camilla, but I found the book to be very deep because you had a man and a woman and he was a loner, a uh, hermit, and she was a social media influencer. And so they were complete opposites. She was also guardian to the, her younger sister, Danny, because the, their mother had left them. Now, why I said this book had some serious moments in it is because they each had baggage and they each had a very strong uh, connection to their family. And with the baggage that they had, it was very difficult for them to get past 
the hurdles that would have allowed them to be a couple. Very good book. Then I had an audio book called Indo Cat by uh, Moss and Barr. And Indo Cat was a self-help book. Yeah, I'll call it self-help. All about the health and wellness of cats that uh, don't go outside. And my cats have always been Indo Cats. I have already decided to uh, read this book a second time or listen to it a second time because there was some very, very, very good tips about keeping your cat healthy for many, many years. And then the next book I read by Madi Sinha was At Least You Have Your Health. And that book was about a wellness clinic. And our doctor was Dr. Mayo Rao. And she had three young children. And she also had a career in what seemed like a happy marriage. Well, something happened where she lost her job. And so she takes the opportunity to work for a glamorous executive private uh, clinic. And she can make all kinds of money. But the thing is, can she hold on to her values as a physician? So that was that book. Oh, by the way, we moved into women's fiction. And the next women's fiction we had was Summer on the Island by Brenda Novak. And anything you read by Novak, anything I have read by Novak has been top notch. And this one was. Then I also had A Family Affair by Robin Carr. And um, so Summer on the Island and A Family Affair, they were... Uh, women's fiction titles in the Harlequin books that I review. And in A Family Affair, we have a woman who, her, husband, her mother passes away, or her father, one, one of her parents passes away, and there's a will, and there's an allotment. 33% goes to each child. But there's the third 33% goes to somebody that they didn't know. Well, it was about her father. I just had to think about it. Her father had been cheating on her mother, their, the parents' own marriage, the whole marriage. And she finds out that her father had a daughter. And so that's why the will got split. So it's called a family affair because values and family commitment and issues and grief and forgiveness all come into play in this book. Sorry, I had to think about that one. Then I have The Lighthouse Girls, which should be in Mystery Thrillers, so I'm going to go change that right now. Alrighty. So The Lighthouse Girls was, uh, I'm not sure which number in a series. An another series that I have read all or most and this is by uh, B.A. Spangler. And this is the Casey White book six. And she's a detective. I love it. I love every book in Spangler series. And I'm always going to read any of these light, um, any of these Casey White books. Excuse me. <coughs> um, I And so here we have, um, not only do we have a body that was found near a lighthouse, but there were two other bodies found in at the location of one of the bodies, newspaper clippings from previous cases that Casey White had solved were found near this body. Well, does that place Casey in danger? So she's investigating the murder, the three murders, and wondering if somebody has it out for her. The next book I read was the Blo uh, Bloomsbury Girls by um, Natalie Jenner, and this follows. Uh, her Jane Austen Society book that I read about a year ago, which is in the other room. And what I loved about this book is um, the name of the bookstore was Bloomsbury Books. And there was a, the boss or the store manager had a list of owner, had a list of rules. I think there were 51, 50 something rules. And I loved these rules because these rules reminded me of the rules that um, Gibbs has in um, NCIS. He has, I think he has 51 rules. And so every, t every chapter in this book has one of the rules. Well, you have three female employees and they decide to change the trajectory of how this bookstore is run, operated, and I loved it. 
I loved it. And then this book had cameos from people like Daphne du Maurier, Peggy Guggenheim, Samuel Beckett. And it was a really good book. I loved it. I really, really did. Then the last book I had was Just the Two of Us by Joe Wildy. And this, um, I'm going to look this up because I'm just not sure if I want to say that it was women's fiction. I kind of, excuse me, I'm trying to not belch out loud. This coffee is getting to me. Just the two of us I had as an audiobook arc, and I can't tell you the narrator right off the top of my hand. And in this particular book, we have, oh, okay, yes, it is women's fiction, but it's also kind of a second chance romance. We have Julie and Michael, who have been married, I think, 34 years, empty nesters, and she's not happy. So she goes to a lawyer to get divorce papers. She's going to divorce her husband. Before she can even pass from the papers, they live in the UK. Uh, the pandemic was in full force and now they are in lockdown. So she's got to find the right time to give these papers to her husband. It's called a second chance romance because they get a second chance. This confinement they have due to lockdown gave their marriage the breath it needs to go on. So that's all the books that I read. It's one of my longer videos. But uh, let's end this video. Um, actually, I'm going to end the video. I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to make another part of the video and I'm going to edit it and put it in front. So I am going to just edit this really weirdly. It's going to take me hours to edit, but it's going to be worth it. So I want to thank you for watching. I will list the books in the description below and I'll be back with more. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Bye.